Today on Drawbly, I'm trying a new painting technique. Hey, I'm Ben. And I'm Abby. And we are self-taught artists documenting our drawing adventures because art is better when shared with friends. So click the subscribe button if you're new around here. And check out our guidebook linked down below. Abby, I can't wait to hear about this new technique. Yes. So first portrait is actually meant to be more of a an a, a approximation of your techniques. Oh, I tried to draw and paint me? a little bit like you draw. Yeah, it was it was an interesting little uh, practice like study. Like I draw. What do you mean by that? I don't know. I I went for something that I decided that might feel a little bit more like how you paint and draw. Okay. I didn't finish this piece. Okay. I tried to make my sketch simple and not shade with my sketch much at all. Okay. Um, I let myself be pretty loose with the sketch, but I didn't try to do too many flowy lines. I wanted to be a little bit more um, angular. And then I did a lot more selection tool and fading out of the selection tool and blurring it. Ooh, I wasn't, whoa, trying to steal my steez. I wasn't focused on accuracy for sure, just is trying these motions for like the first time to see how I like them. And I did. I really liked putting down the, the full red and then fading it out. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was really fun and interesting. And then having those edges be hard just right from the start and then just softening the edges where I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, I like it. I like it. Yeah. So I think it'll be something that I can blend with um, my current workflow in the future. What uh, what parts of it? Hmm? The what part of this can you like the fading or? Yeah, the fading, more of the selection tool. Mm -hmm. um, I was a lot more kind of basic with my sketch. I didn't get too distracted by getting down into little details right away. I see that you turned your sketch off. Yeah, that makes just, me sad. I know, just to try to see things differently. But I think I turned it back on later on i'm not positive nope <laughs> and then you you typically get rid of your sketch later on that's I, something you normally do yeah well I, I think it's like it feels like i'm challenging myself to try to um create a piece that stands alone without the sketch uh, essentially is the framework but you're right sometimes it's nicer to leave the sketch in in this one, I'm no longer working on uh, your workflow. I am so working. not new technique, but new techniques. There's multiple new things that you're trying in this video. Oh yeah, I did not know that. So in that one, I tried your workflow a little bit, and in this one, I am trying again to use a workflow that I tried a little bit ago when I drew a horse the other day, where each part of the drawing oh yeah will be sectioned out and painted with its own bright color. Okay, and then over top of each of those sections or layers, I will create a clipping mask or simply alpha lock that initial layer and draw on top of it to leave things marked out well enough and separate from each other. I like your sketch so far a lot. It's really cool. Thank you. I, I did like the sketch quite a bit. I wasn't sure about adding color on top of it really, but it was a pretty good way to go about it, I thought. The way that you work here is actually often how I work in the early stages. However, I don't use these like bright colors for my different sections. Instead, I'm like, here's the shirt. And I have that like, not alpha locked, but I'll create a mask lock mm, for it mm -hmm. through clipping masks. So gotcha. that is a, you know, a, a way that I like to think in general because it is very similar to how I work in 3D where I'm like, this is its own 3D object, and I can mm. go over and work on that one, and then I can go work on this 3D object. It does make me think of you, especially with this method where each of these layers is initially a very bright color, which reminds me of how your uh, figures look in ZBrush when you have them subdivided into different sections, and they're all like randomly assigned very bright colors. Those are called polygroups. Mm. Yeah, they are mm. randomly assigned colors. There is a technical uh, reason why they are different colors, but I won't get into it. I don't get into that here. Oh, this no, is no. a drawing channel, no. not a sculpting channel. It's not even something I would ever describe on my channel because it's extremely boring and Well, that's technical. why you should describe it on our channel because it's so niche, like it doesn't even belong on yours. Therefore, it doesn't it's belong anywhere. extra funny that it would end up on ours. <laughs> there are so many things that I know about ZBrush that aren't worth me explaining to other people because they're extremely convoluted and don't make 
it would be hard to describe them. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think there would be a, quite an audience for that. You don't know. <laughs> Here I am with my deep, my ZBrush deep lore. <laughs> <laughs> People would absolutely <laughs> tune in for that. Did you know that ZBrush exists because of Sonic the Hedgehog? I bet you didn't, but I'll explain why. <laughs> <laughs> in your next video, not this one. <laughs> I bet people would want to hear about that. I, you know, there might be a couple. Yeah, now you should you should try putting that in your videos. I mm. think I think it'll be a big success, huge. Well, I like the uh, the random large colors you're doing. What are you doing here by zooming in and trying like... to clean up the edges a little, ah, make okay, things okay, a little okay. less choppy. Um, yeah, just have things be clean before I start on the painting process. Cool, cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this definitely reminds me of like a sculpting, a 3D sculpting workflow. Mm -hmm. So what was your opinion of this workflow? Like, how did you, how did you like it? I liked it. Um, I liked it chiefly for areas that I traditionally have struggled to keep clean and separate from each other. Let's say the neck and chin area. I tend to, without this workflow, I feel like I tend to have those bleed into each other by accident quite a lot more. So You're this a really, very soft painter. Yeah, and I don't like to be necessarily. Not all the time. Nobody wants to be, you know, all hard or all soft all the time. Yeah, exactly. You need a balance. So helping keep that clean and clear the the um, space like between her shirt and chest area as well that was nice to be able to keep that very clean and then things where things go in different directions like the top of her shirt versus that bottom wrap around part of her shirt letting those stay very clean from each other was nice as well uh, a recommendation i would have looking at this as you know thinking in this way as like a 3d artist kind of idea is i would separate the sleeves from the chest i was just thinking that on playing this back and watching it i'm like and now i think i should have separated the sleeves yeah just so you can make that a really clean separation but mm -hmm. with that type of fabric for drawing, it might not be, it's obviously not necessary, but it might be helpful, as well as separating this like middle belt piece. Oh yeah, good point. Oh, that's a good point too. You when can it, really break this down. <laughs> yeah, when it, so in 3D, that would like definitely be separate uh, for me, and each button obviously would be a separate object, but that that's a little different and unnecessary for, for 2D. But anytime, uh, how could I describe it? There's like in clothing, uh, a seam line to a separate piece of the clothing, like a sleeve, it's often very beneficial and helpful to make that its own separate piece, mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. least in 3D. Yeah. And I could see how it would be very helpful here as well. Yeah, could be, absolutely. Um, when I saw this, I thought it was a, a study of folds because your folds were so good. Oh, thank you. I did spend a lot of time on the folds in the end. The skirt, I did not spend a lot of time on, but I felt like I liked the way it looked after just a little bit of time. Um, but no, yeah, the, it's a lot of folds in her blouse, so there's a lot of, to study on there. I also enjoyed working on her face and hair and chest area, although it was a pretty small scale to work on the face at the level I tried to work on it in. So that would be the area that I most felt like I wasn't able to quite do justice to what I could maybe do otherwise, like on a larger scale. But I have experimented with in the past, just drawing the head large and shrinking it down, and that doesn't ever work the way I think it will. So I left things small and just tried to keep simplifying instead of making it more complex with a varying rates or negligible rates of success. Yes, I think you are in the process of discovering that bigger does not always mean better. Um, or and, I have discovered it. Or you have discovered it. I, I, I do think that we are both still in the process of learning this because you can create amazing artwork with really low resolution and oftentimes people who are beginner to intermediate have this kind of workflow in 3D where you think you need a ton of resolution to accomplish this thing and it just, you know, things are messy and they're hard to control. So you think by having more resolution, it will make it better. But in fact, having that lower resolution is often what makes it easier or better to control. Mm -hmm. That doesn't exactly translate to 2D in the same way, but I do think that 
getting better and practicing lower resolutions is better than practicing higher resolutions necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not wrong. So that is my study of the day. And if you don't want to be wrong, click that like and subscribe button and check out our guidebook linked down below. Share your work on Instagram with hashtag Drobly because art is better with friends. And this is the part where we say goodbye. Goomba. I love the way this turned out. And the last one as well, utilizing my techniques. I know. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so flattered. I know. Who knows how far I'll go stealing everybody's techniques. <laughs>